Point. And I said to myself, where is this coming from? Because I know how I talk. And so I know what I say and don't say. And the last one I said, ah, I don't know where it's come from. So if I don't do anything else, I'm going to get that in straight. Because I only want like in there. Print. Exactly what you said. So when you read it, like you're going to be working well, on you, permits. Can you we're ask them to send it by email? How do I do that? We're talking so about Respond to the text huh? and give them my email address. Okay. Uh, and then no. Yeah. I was just saying, otherwise, it's just kind of. It was yeah. just Very there, true. but you know, I, know. I don't, I, I don't I like that. I'm like, misleading I people. I, I want us to be as straightforward as we can be on everything that we do. Right. So unless I copy, can I? Copy? Okay. You might be able to copy it and put it in an email. Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we're gonna let the party begin, please. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate it. We have really tried to let everybody know how important this is. I'm sure you realize how important it is, but even more than that, the fact that you're showing up is exactly what we want because with the end product, it's gonna have everything to do with your input as well as ours. Um, earlier this week, I, I got an email from someone and uh, they were a little bit upset because I hadn't got back to my emails. It's important for you to know that I get a lot of emails, and especially on this subject matter, you are not ignored. I will not respond to you immediately. Um, I did in the last meeting. That was my bad. I should basically have not uh, given someone else's name. But the bottom line is we have everything you're given us. We will continue to collect everything you're given us, and we will make it a very integral part of what we do and all the decisions we make. Okay, this is exactly how we're going to operate. Uh, Emery, what did I say you were going to do? Okay, so. Good morning, Jeffrey. Just very, very briefly, what I'm going to do is through, I can take the talk at the same time. I'm going to go through the, the web page that we have for short term rentals. It has been updated. So if you go under the government tab, go to the right under ordinances, amendments, and projects, we have short term rentals. It includes you know, the, the charge of the committee, pertinent information, public input, members of the committee, and then links to our meetings. Um, right here, we have public comments that have been received to date. This will be updated. I um, am in the process right now of converting those that came in between 4.30 yesterday and 9.57 this morning. Um, so that will be updated shortly. Um, I think the, the idea today is to really go through the, um, to go through 
the beach side to discuss the, the different challenges that the beach side poses and the, the you know, ideas over there to gain feedback from the public and then at the next meeting to do the same thing in the downtown area. So um, we will have meetings um, August 2nd, which is next week. That agenda will be posted today, August 9th, um, which is two weeks from now. Um, again, at 10 o'clock, all of them 10 o'clock in here. And then August 30th, <clears throat> 10 o'clock in here. And, and the hope is that really by August 30th, we're, we're reviewing the ordinance language. So um, I do want to bring up our zoning ordinance again, or the zoning map, just as a reminder of the area that we are looking at today. Pretty much what we are looking at today is all of this residential area over on Lewis Beach um, that it, you know, you have all of um, what's known as Lewis Beach, the stuff around Cape Penlopen, off Cape Penlopen Drive. You've got this back off of Tennessee and Texas Avenue and then Cape Shores. Pilot Point and um, Port Lewis are zoned R5. So if we do um, regulations, certain regulations by zoning district, R5 would be separate because there is R5 scattered around the city. Doesn't mean it's necessarily more restrictive or less restrictive. It's just that um, we'll be looking at all of the R5s together. Um, at this point, <coughs> we're looking at doing that on August 9th. So, with that, I will go back to the Zoom screen. Oh, I didn't have the mic on, so I don't know if anyone's just- No, we heard you, we heard you. I thought, I thought I was speaking into the mic, but- Did you hear me, Jeffrey? Okay. Um, so, so that's kind of where we are now. So, I mean, I think the idea is really to focus on the, um, the beach side, the R3 and R3H zone. We have gotten some comments from a property owner in R3H that um, really focuses more on the neighborhood character. So, you know, it could be at some point the decision of the, the committee to not treat R3 and R3H entirely the same. Um, and, and again, all of that can be determined when we get into the ordinance language. So, but really today is to hear, you know, pros, cons, um, challenges, opportunities, all of those things as it relates to the beach side. Thank you. And that has everything to do with the quality of life, everything from trash removal to um, recycling, the, the police policy, the traffic, the parking. And when I think of quality of life, I mean quality of life in general. It's not just those specific things. So um, we're here today to hear what you have to say. You have written a lot. We really do appreciate everything you have. As I was telling Witty, we will bring all of this into focus when we get ready to work on the ordinance. But right now, I want to hear what you consider to be some of the issues specifically in R3H, which is the historic district. We're going to start with that first. So if someone would like to come to the mic, that's fine. If not, I will ask my own folks and we will start working on it. Any comments, anybody? Sure, come on. Uh, you have to come up here so everyone can hear you. And, and just for clarity, it's R3H, which is the historic district on the beach side, which is East Market, the very end of East Market. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Connie Costigan. I live at 210 East Market Street. Um, our, we are the only historic <laughs> block on the beach. Uh, of the seven houses, uh, six, uh, five, are over a hundred years old. And we petitioned ourselves to be in it because we saw the kinds of things that were going up around <laughs> us and old houses being torn down. Um, so we have a special interest. I've lived there for 45 years. I've been very active in city affairs for a long time. Um, 
and we are very concerned as to when, how many houses, how many properties are going to be businesses on the beach. We, 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 we are aware, aware that a, um, a short-term rental is a business and people admittedly say they bought the property for the sole purpose of renting it. Uh, and short-term rentals are a business but how many should be allowed in a residential area when, I mean, what is the proportion? When after a while, the Hall of Lewis Beach will be a business area called residential, but not really. And we are very concerned because there are more and more houses <clears throat> that are being empty for eight, nine months of the year. There's no one there. No one is taking care of anything. Occasionally the landscape crews come through and. The only people we see in the winter are the landscape crews and the construction people. And pretty soon, if it goes far enough, we'll be the only ones left. So I think the committee should think carefully about how many businesses should be allowed <coughs> in a residential. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Connie. Thank you. Just your block is the one block that's historic. <laughs> Because we were the original market. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's only because we were the original market street, and the people who lived on our house in our houses were fishermen. The some houses were built later as vacation homes, but uh, basically our street was pretty much all year round. Um, we we used to have uh, at least. We all know each other. <laughs> you said there's seven homes? Yeah, there's seven homes. Two of them uh, are recent. They didn't, you know, they were, however you call it, they were included. Okay. Uh, there were, there are five that are over a hundred years. Okay. Um, and, and you have rentals in your area right now? Uh, we have, we have uh, one, one rental. And it's, an, it's a, a resident who's been there since uh, 1969. <laughs> oh. And her, her short-term rentals are only to people she knows. So you have one on your street as a short-term rental? That's going so on understand. all the time. And okay. All the, uh, three of uh, the Harrises, ourselves, and uh, our neighbors are all-year-round residents. Okay. Um, mostly it's been, uh, well, all the people who've been there uh, since I came in the early, in mid early mid seventies, uh, have have used them as summer homes. If they weren't living there all year round, they used them as summer homes. And we've all been friends, and we're all artists, and we shown together, and okay. and so we've been a pretty close knit group. And now we're getting old, and <laughs> yes, yeah. changing. But is your concern that it is a rental there, or is your concern on how the rentals be at handle? What is your main concern, uh, Connie? Our concern is that if people are buying houses as investment properties to have summer rental business, uh, then our street will no longer be residential. And uh, that would change the entire character of a historic street. And one thing, the other thing about our street is that we have no parking. I mean, we, the Harrises and ourselves had to petition to get parking spaces in front of our houses. Okay. Uh, because our houses weren't built for parking, for okay. driveways. Um, that's, uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I hope Thank it answers your question. Yes, it did. Thanks a lot, Connie. Yeah, I appreciate thanks. it. Okay. Yes, please. I'm uh, George Thomason. I live on Jefferson Court in Lewis. I'm a homeowner, and I also live in the historic district. I'm the uh, 2022 president of the Sussex County Association of Realtors. Um, <clears throat> so I come sort of with that hat on today. I just wanted to talk about uh, what Connie mentioned about uh, businesses, uh, uh, short-term rentals or properties specifically in the historic district. Uh, being treated as businesses. The historic district, uh, H Park, um, controls the materials used for these homes. Uh, they have to, they, you know, as far as demolition goes, anything, anything going to, to that uh, subject is very restrictive of what can be done with these properties. 
So a property that is in the historic district has to maintain the uh, rhythm and scale of the neighborhood and cannot be changed. So when you call it a commercial business, and I guess you could say that a short-term rental is a business, it's not going to affect, people renting here are not going to affect the rhythm and scale of the communities. I think what the problem could be uh, addressed here is parking, which is, I, I whether you're in the historic district or not, parking is an issue. So I would be a, a, a strong advocate for possibly permit parking. That would take care of a lot of business and, and uh, uh, or a lot of problems with regard to number of cars and people who are parking on the street. But I just wanted to let you know that the argument of short-term rentals as a business anywhere in the city are not going to, you know, they can't, they can't post signs, they can't change, they can't have neon lights, et cetera. So I just wanted to make that point and let's stay on target there. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, George. Anyone else? Please, sir. Oh, my name is Mike, Mike Wasserman. and I have a property I own at 104 Bradley Lane in Lewis, Delaware. I've been coming to this area since I met my college roommate back in the late 90s. His family owned a property in Bethany Beach. They rented that property. They weren't a corporation. We own our property here. My family, myself, we're not Walmart, right? We're not Marriott. And we rent that as beach towns do across America for the history of beach towns. So I would strongly recommend that, first of all, I, don't, I haven't seen, I don't know if the committee did an economic study, the impact of potential loss for revenue, if folks like myself and other families that own their properties can no longer rent those properties. I would assume right now we're facing inflationary increases, negative economic impact. I assume that if we're no longer able to rent our property, now I know the first area you're looking at doesn't impact me, but it seems like a precedence being set here. It's not a, this is not a, a minor impact to the potential community. So I would say, first of all, do an economic impact to understand how it's going to impact everybody that is owning a business and employing folks along this main street that's been built up based on individuals like myself renting their properties. And I take a look at that and say, you know, it, it feels to me, I own property in Massachusetts. I've owned property in Cape Cod. I've owned property in Virginia. I've never seen this type of overreach where a committee said, hey, we're going to, you know, certainly there's zoning laws and what you can do to your house, but I've never had a committee say, gee, we're going to limit the return on the investment you can have with short-term rentals. Again, these are families that own these properties. They're not large corporations. And I have to believe the economic impact and the potential offset to tax increase, whether it's property tax, whether it's some sort of sales or restaurant tax, you're going to have to, you know, potentially um, convey on folks like myself and the business owners in the area could be significant to potentially offset the lost revenue to Lewis. So I, I strongly suggest that type of an analysis to be done. And again, I want to make a clear point. These are not businesses. These are families primarily that own these units and rent them to other families like myself who learned about Lewis over the past 15 years. Can I have right your here. last name again, sir? Wasserman, W-A-S-S-E-R-M-A-N. What was your first name? I'm sorry. Mike. Mike? Mike? Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Mike, thank you very much. I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't think we are lightly going into this. We understand every one of your concerns. Everyone in this room understands those concerns. We're not looking at it any other specific way other than to how to work it out for everybody. So thanks for your time. And, and when you mention, you know, um, having properties other places and how things are being done, um, I think I'll get Jeffrey to give you some kind of an idea of how rentals are happening in other states. Jeffrey, give me give me a, a brief on this, would you please, just to inform folks that we're not looking into this blindly. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this has been a really hot topic all around the country, certainly any sort of beach town, lake town, ski town. Uh, places, I think probably five or six years ago, were just trying to catch up to the problem. A lot of them passed very, very basic ordinances of just trying to, to, to define what was happening. I think in the last uh, year or two, uh, even beyond the pandemic, 
places have started to get a little more specific and they want to be very nuanced in what they are uh, regulating. You know, very few places have gone to to a ban, right? That's not really on the table anymore. That was that was a few years ago. Uh, cities tried to do that. Uh, more what you're seeing is just trying to be very targeted and and respecting the differences of neighborhoods, the differences of scale, the differences of historic or not historic. Uh, also expectations. There are plenty of neighborhoods in, you know, say South Lake Tahoe, California, where people shouldn't be that surprised that there are vacation rentals. It's been an industry there for quite a long time. And so the expectations are different, which means the impacts are different, different, which means the regulatory tools are going to be different. Um, even more locally, you look at Atlantic City. Atlantic City got very, very nuanced about uh, ownership, uh, about parking. Uh, Newport, Rhode Island, <laughs> another place with a lot of historic districts, um, you know, took a, a kind of broader approach, but still got uh, into some of the nitty gritty. And that's because they have some sort of other uh, value or issue or goal within to, in the town that they wanted to address. And so you haven't seen that many places in the last year, uh, you know, really come down very hard. I think it's more about trying to find a good balance and trying to get at the, the details that are gonna matter most for the people in the community. Thank you, I appreciate that. Anyone else do you have anything to say? Oh, please. Just state your name so we have. Amy Cleaver. Um, I took some notes. I listened to the last can, meeting on the webinar. Can, can some, you share your address, please? 310 Mulberry Street. Okay, thank you. So if you don't mind, I'm going to read it. True. Um, on Chestnut Street in the late 60s, my parents bought their first house in Lewis. In 1983, they retired and moved to their house on Mulberry Street. They loved and became part of Lewis. When we first came here for weekends and summers, it was an adorable, mixed race, close knit, hick town. The changes have been continued to be rapid, some good, some not. The most constant and noticeable changes are the increase of traffic and tourists. I have an Airbnb in the front part of my historic house on 310 Mulberry Street. This is my sixth year. I understand both sides of the short term rental debate. I personally would not have entertained the idea if I thought it would interfere with my community and neighbors living their dream in Lewis. I manage it myself, clean it myself, and live on the property. I don't know how you could properly manage a rental if you're not here. I also understand the renter side and that they save all year, get all excited, bring the dogs, kids, and kitchen sink, and are here to have fun and aren't concerned about the neighbors. Without the renters and tourists, the small business <clears throat> in our town would suffer. There'd be no line at King's, Agave wouldn't have a three hour wait, craft fairs and such wouldn't make it, etc. All of which bring commerce into our little town. Back to the short term rentals, I think a good start, these are just ideas. I think a good start would be to make the owners responsible to enforce the rules that this committee decides on. A simple start might be to insist that every short-term rental has a list of the town rules, such as noise ordinance, dogs on leashes, crosswalks, who to contact if you have a problem, and being respectful of your neighbors. I'm guessing most short-term renters don't know any of this, might not care, but will be aware of it maybe provide a public list of the owner's contact information of all short-term rentals in case the neighbor has an issue. I personally have never had a complaint, but if someone ever does, please call me and I'll handle it myself. Thank you. You're very welcome. That was part of our conversation last time and I remember your interest in it. Um, when she says she needed, that someone needed to be there, a contact person, we didn't even really find a good name other than contact person 24 hours or something, didn't we? Other local contact. Local contact. So that's something that's that full information. We, we, we're very cognizant of that. Thank you. Anyone else out here need have anything to say? Yes, please come. Just give us your name. I'm Renee Cotts. I, I'm at uh, um, 118 School Lane, which is technically in the historic district. Right. It, did you say Renee, Renee Cotts? K-O-T-Z. K-O-T-Z. Okay. K-O-T-Z. K-O-T-Z. Thank you. Yeah, and 
so ours, I just want a, a different perspective, maybe um, ours is, was a COVID purchase and part of the calculation of purchasing a second home for the first time was being able to rent it just to pay the taxes, offset. You know, just offset some. So we rent three tops four weeks out of the year. And it just, and I, I don't live full time, but I'm there every week. Right. And um, it's just been like a life changer. Okay. And just the ability to rent it, let me convince my husband. So just those, and I manage it and do everything. So you're full time, you, you actually are responsible for your week. rentals. I work, yeah. I work in Maryland two days a week and then I'm here. Oh, that's wonderful. Good. So it's, that's a, awesome. it's a great lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. So you probably don't hear many of these stories, but um, I just here to tell you that it's been ideal and I hate renting it. It's my home, but I do it because I have to. And, and it's, it's worked out, knock on wood. And you're around if, if, if your renters need you. Oh yeah, absolutely. If my cleaners don't come, I'm two hours away. I hightail it over here. You know, so I, I feel like I'm in control because I have to be. Good. But anyway, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. It's another good side to look at. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Allison White. Um, I'm a 20 year resident of the extended Lewis over in Hawkeye and uh, recently purchased a property at 206 Massachusetts as an investment property to rent it out. Um, that property when built 20 years ago was built to be an investment property. Nobody has ever lived in it full time. So <laughs> I thought I was continuing it, not to mention that we did um, hundreds of thousands of dollars of improvements on the property. So um, I just wanted to give that perspective, local family looking to have an investment on the beach, potentially to help our retirement um, one day. A couple of requests, um, as I got involved, the zoning map doesn't have the R whatever's labeled. Could we add that? So it's a little confusing for those that are trying to figure out. I mean, obviously on the beach, that's fine. It's in the legend. Um, the R's? I don't think so. Yeah, you have to, oh, sorry. Um, I'm Kayla and I'm the clerk. The When you're looking at the map, it does separate by zoning. However, depending on the house, if you actually click on the areas, it'll tell you if that house is historic or not. Right, but the actual delineations that you're using is R3, R4, R5. I don't see them anywhere on the map. I see the zones, but I don't see that they're actually labeled R. Oh, whatever. you know what? It, they're they're spelled out, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can I can. So have, it's confusing, and yes. you're trying to understand. And you, as the committee, I watched the prior meetings online. Good. Thank you. I okay. I see what you're saying. So we'll, we'll get that fixed. Okay. And the other thing is, I haven't seen anything in trying to get myself up to speed on the prior committee meetings and everything. And I, in, it's. I hear a little bit of flip-flopping, I think. I'm wondering how many complaints there actually are. I haven't seen any statistics on. Well, we're just getting them. Perfect. They're just coming in. Okay, and great. I wouldn't call them complaints. I'd say concerns. a lot of them are concerns. Concerns. No, no, I mean, that's not what I meant, because I did fill out one of those as well. Oh, okay. But um, that's I'm not talking common. about this. I'm saying, I'm like, about how these. many calls are there to the police? How many parties are there going on? How many noise complaints are there? How much trash is added? You know, um, and I wouldn't like to see a scenario where I heard someone in a prior meeting saying about being in the historic district and just not wanting rentals there. And so make the fees high enough basically to prevent people from wanting to rent or having the economics work to rent. And I wouldn't want to see that applied as, a, you know, I'm all for covering the costs that rentals obviously probably do have a little bit more trash and there probably are some noise complaints from the renters and but we'd hope that that's what the additional tax we're paying on the rental fees is covering so what we're doing right now is listing we're just but listing. we started the committee for a reason right correct and so is it was it a few complaints from residents well we stated what our community what our commitment was when we when we did this so if you'd like me to read it to you, I'd be happy to do no, no, so, but go it. online and it'll show you exactly what we I'm trying to be been. controversial. Oh, I'm no, I don't, wondering I'm not picking it up as if that. it Because it does state about looking at the, what it does to the town as far as costs. And I'm just wondering how much 
do we think it adds to the police force? How much, you know? Well, that's well, what we're trying to figure right. out. Right, and, and we, we do going. know, for instance, we, we had evaluated um, in 2018, we evaluated discontinuing the second trash pickup in the, in the summer. And we could not do that because of the vacation rentals. So that, that, that's a cost. That's yeah, no, a, a clear I, cost. Absolutely. So it's not necessarily complaints. It's there's a different service demand. Um, if you've got a six bedroom house that has 12 people staying in it, that's the service demand is different than the owner occupied home. And yeah. I think that's the, and to be that's clear, what we're looking I at. I understand that. And that's, I hear, if that's an issue that it's not covering the cost then by all means, right. but I don't want to see tax extra tax to prevent the economics of a rental working. That, right. That's and, and I don't think that that's the intent, but there right. are again, um, like Connie mentioned, and we've mentioned as it relates to the um, historic district on this side of town, there are places that do not have off street parking. And if you've got three, four cars come. I'm all for the so, so I'm those for are, looking at parking so that's, and all of those. That's kind of what we're looking to do is, mm -hmm. is manage, not, we're not looking to overly restrict. We're looking to manage because it is the, the number of investment rentals, some summer rentals, vacation rentals, whatever is growing. And we, so the idea is to stay ahead of it so that we don't create a huge problem because we didn't and and this is like a lens like what we're what we're doing we're looking through a lens and we're seeing everyone's um concerns and i know i i believe what we're hearing too is that residents are sometimes taking the heat for the renters that leave they're cleaning up driveways these are just things that we've heard in past mm -hmm. meetings but but again this is just a lens and and i do believe we'll get we'll get to some answers that you will probably want to hear and you should attend every meeting for sure it's important and we hear what you're saying so. yeah you should it's important it really I'm just is commenting on prior comments not from this committee no yeah from, no no I'm, I'm, we have the reverse. yeah Side of it. Just, just one comment there. Can you pull your mic a little closer? Yeah. Fire up my talk. Um, just one comment on you just said the number of rentals is growing. So I, I actually think the numbers, the quantitative numbers, show that there was a decrease in number of rentals from 2020 to 2021. The revenue went up, but the number actually went down. Yes, they did. Um, so I, I don't think we have a defined quantitative trend of number of rentals going up. Yeah, I mean, my yes. part, well, the so right now, it's always a rental. Right now, rentals aren't differentiated between short term and long term. So that that's one of the things we don't have a good handle with under our current licensing system on how many are short term versus long term. We will though. And and that's part of what we're we're looking. Yeah. And that I mean again that that is you know in, in a, a short window remembering that the the 20, 2020 a lot of things changed in that period of time. Yeah, no, I, I think it's fine, but I think let's like let's just stick to the numbers. We don't. There's a there's an idea here that we think they're increasing. We do not have any quantitative evidence that they are. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. How many rentals are there? Do we know that? In 22, 450 licenses were renewed in fiscal year 22. That's for all the city of Lewis. Yes. So there's about 415 houses or dwellings. 450. 415 dwellings. And 450. 450 I'm, saying, I'm saying there's dwellings. 415 dwellings in the in the downtown oh. area. Oh, I see what you're saying. How okay. many of those? Is, so that includes Lewis Beach as well. That's citywide. Okay. Yes. And that's whether it's an apartment. You know, so if. If it's an apartment over a shop, if it's a townhouse. We don't differentiate between Airbnb and VRBOs and apartments and whatever that. No, right now, a, a will, rental's a we rental. We don't have it right now. And, and we do know that there are people who are renting without licenses. Right. Um, host compliance has helped us to, you know, start to, to identify those and make sure that, that they're getting licenses. We're um, going in that direction by the time we get finished. Right we'll now. have the specifics we need when we start making some decisions. But right now, we're at a gathering. 
I'm just trying to get this information together, Don. So I apologize. I thought that you thought she said 450. So you were saying 415, and I I thought that, well, rough, yeah, but you're saying that's the total number of, of right, and Lewis. I get what you're saying now. And just okay. while we're on those numbers, because I think there's some new folks here, the um, what was the average actual rental amount per year reported in 2021? The and average gross residential receipt mm -hmm. tax paid. Uh, nope, the rental, the the amount, the rental amount. So there, there's gross tax paid, but don't you actually also get the? Well, they have to in order to but, to determine the five percent, they need to to provide us. Mm -hmm. their, yeah. yeah, because and that so that's one of the things was total income. Our um our accounting system doesn't easily lend itself to determine um, <clears throat> by which which of these geographic areas, which of these zones is, mm -hmm. is generating what money we're able to, we have a series of steps we need to go through to get there. And that's one of the things that we are gonna be looking at is what is the, the tax income, mm -hmm. you know, based on different areas of the city. Because I, I, I think we all agree that some sort of a financial analysis is important to, so that you want the, that the committee and that mayor and council ultimately understand what what are the you know opportunity costs if we were to do restrictions. Um, uh, Carolyn, there is a person on Zoom that would like to speak. Sure. What's the name? I can't. I can Aaron. Hi, Aaron Macnabo. It's M C N A B O E. And my address is 313 West Cape Shores. Um, I just wanted to share our perspective of being a member of the Lewis community and also um, a participant in the short term rental. Uh, market. So we purchased our home in 2018, specific for Lewis and the long term plan that we would be retiring to our home in Lewis. Um, part of the way that we, of course, were able to do that was by offering rental. Um, so the first year we did use a locally owned and well respected um, rental company to run our home for us and handle the cleaning as well as all of the check-in check-out and at the end of the season it was not up to the standards that I was looking for for our home. Um, at that point I rolled all of the management over to me and I took on all of the day-to-day -day management operations and booking for our home. I want to share that um, we are now going into our fifth season. Um, it's the fourth season where it's 100% managed by me. I have, our home has more than 64 reviews, 4.9 stars. Um, many of the reviews talk about the communication specific with me. I'm available 24 seven with all of them. I have a house manager who comes and checks on the house every week in between renters specific to the trash situation. And we also have um, a cleaning company that we've been using. This is also the fourth season with them who are very reliable. They are very expensive, but they come every Saturday on time and do an excellent job. Um, the majority of our renters are multi-generations. So we normally see grandparents as well as grandkids, and we have a lot of repeat guests. Um, I will share that most of our clientele who um, are not a good fit for our home also find themselves not a good fit for Lewis. And they're looking for something entirely different with their experience. And they actually weed themselves out as a repeat guest because they are looking for a more of a party environment. They're not looking for the quiet and quaint Lewis environment that drew us there and therefore is the majority of our guests. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to share my perspective on that. 
Um, I know there's been some discussion about whether or not someone needs to be locally managing it. And I understand the concern, but I also want to share the extreme value of having the owner being the one talking to them and laying the groundwork and explaining, we have full-time residents on both sides of our home and they keep an eye on things and explaining that they're dealing one-on-one -on -one with me as the owner that they know we have our family, we have children, we've developed a relationship. And so I think there's tremendous value in that versus someone who is just checking the box to do their job per se. Thank you. I Can I ask a that. question? Yeah, of course. So Aaron, do you have, so you manage it, how far away are you? <laughs> We are in Annapolis, so we're an hour and a half away, so we can get there on an emergency, um, but we feel as though we have the support system in place to be able to be there quicker than an hour and a half if needed. So, so if there were something, if you had something come, you know, you, you got the rowdy whatever and and the the police call you you have you would be able to manage that situation yes but do you have a person here is your point of contact yes neighbors right is it aaron didn't you say you had neighbors that were um pretty um helpful yes we have neighbors on both sides it's a um you know we keep a an open line of communication um they you know we consider it an added bonus, quite honestly, that they're there keeping an eye on things as well. Erin, because you rent yours, um, do you have cameras on the outside of your, your home? We do have a ring doorbell camera. Um, we do not record it during the summer, but it does help to keep an eye on things, um, you know, both from a safety as well as if there was in fact an issue, we can log in and see a feed. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Aaron. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Oh, Carolyn. Oh, sorry. Oh, there's another one minute. Um, there is a comment in here. Um, Someone's Elaine. name? Yes. Elaine Buter. I'm probably going to say that wrong. Um, she said that I am curious to know if the impact of development has been taken into account in terms of traffic, trash, and et cetera. Well, so I don't think we... I don't think, it, it, so, I think that's the purview of this committee. It, it's, right. I don't think that's our purview, and we haven't... Right. Per, traffic wasn't under our our no, charge at all. No, not at the, all. The issues of the issue of trash relates specifically to where we're collecting trash. Um, so that that's the trash we're looking at where the city provides trash service. And then, um, you know, parking is an issue that we've brought up, but again, parking, not traffic. And, and again, as we talk about parking, we're talking about parking as it relates to people staying in individual units, not the, the larger parking picture. Uh, for the benefit of those who don't know what our charge is, because this is the biggest group that we've had, and I'm happy that you're all here. Let me just reiterate what our charge is here. Possible zoning options to help manage short-term rentals. Possible need for additional regulations to manage short-term rentals. Possible need to differentiate the GRRT rate for short-term rentals versus long-term rentals. Possible need to revisit the licensing fees and requirements for short-term rentals. And please consider what city services are being impacted by short-term rentals. These services include trash removal, recycling, traffic, and the police and parking as it relates to short-term rentals. Kim. All right, um, Kim Avazian, 312 Pilot Town Road. I live in the historic district, um, not on the beach side, but on the town side. Um, I thought we were here to talk about Lewis Beach and, and that geographic area, that R3 That's area. Correct. And I'm hearing a lot of other comments, general comments. And I know that there are good renters, 
good landlords I, I, and bad ones and, and, and bad tenants as well. Um, but my concern is the, the committee has not really focused on the districts, the areas that might be regulated and how they differ from each other. So what I've been doing on my own is walking the streets of the historic district and counting houses, counting off street parking spaces and differentiating between residential <clears throat> and business. There are businesses scattered throughout the historic district. The one thing I could not do or would not do is try to determine if there's an apartment or how many apartments above, because I just, I'm walking on the street. That's all. Right. You're it's, talking about in town, correct? In town. Okay, but we're talking but about I, the beach right now. You Kim. haven't been talking about no, the beach. No, Kim, well, excuse me. if we haven't been, that's our intention, and that's where I prefer to stay. And what I want, beach. So, I want several to... of your commenters own property at on both. Lewis Beach, and were ex and, and others didn't. And but some of them but that they, come they're in talking it. about their experience as as property owners. Right. So, and and what I wanted they, to say is, has anyone looked at Lewis Beach and walked the streets to determine how many how many houses are there, how many rentals are there, what is the off-street parking availability on Lewis Beach. I think we're very aware of the off-street parking because we've done all, we've done parking studies. What we're, I mean, the purpose of looking at it by district is so that the the property owners and residents within those districts can can speak up. So we, you know, we heard from from Connie. We we heard from Aaron. We we heard from Allison White. Um, you know, so we we've heard from a number of people who who own, own or live in that area. We we can't we can't determine or direct what people are going to say when they come to the mic. So you know, people we sent an email blast. So I, people I people throughout the community had the opportunity to come. So if if there were a lot of residents on Lewis Beach that had serious concerns about these various issues, they have the opportunity. What we're hearing from is the people who showed up. Um, we also have, you know, oops, that's yours. We also have, and we have copies if people want to see them on the website, the comments that, that are being submitted are all posted on the website. So the, the work of the committee, a lot of it is going to happen as individual committee members comb through what's said at the meetings and what's submitted, you know, in writing. But, you know, again, the, the intent today is to focus on the R3 and R3H zones. Well, and people so several people who have reported it today, Kim, have property at the beach. Yes. Okay. I, I, so I, it's not I as though we're not still going down that line. We are. And, and I agree with you completely. It's just that it seemed as though the, the focus was more on whether or not somebody was a good landlord or, or the well, okay, guests I, I were can't, good. I can't prohibit people from saying how they feel, but the bottom line is the focus is still going to be R three H, okay, and R three. Well, then that's that's fine. I just and all that information you have that same way. You make sure I get all that information you have. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Kim. Anyone else? Oh, sure. Come on, George. Sorry to come back up again. I just want to say, um, you already have my name. <laughs> I just want to say, and this goes for Lewis Beach and actually the whole town of Lewis. When you consider restricting some property owners from renting their homes, but allow others to rent their homes, that kind of smacks of a, 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 a real in you know real unfairness. So that's one thing I want you to keep in mind when you say you're going to restrict rentals in certain areas and not restrict them in others. We should be fair to everyone. We all own properties in, in Lewis, Lewis Beach, et cetera. So you need to be fair with that. With regard to the trash, I, I kind of want to 
figure out where the logic is that a house that is occupied by renters and homeowners at various times of the time, how they actually produce more trash than someone who lives in their home full time. That just doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm a perfect example of a person who lives here, George. Okay. And on Fridays, I don't need a pickup because I don't have any right. to put out. We have a lot of people who have, I mean, I, I, I know somebody who, who's renting a nine bedroom house and staying with it in it with extended family for a week. So if you've got, again, 15, 20 people staying in a right. nine bedroom Not house, you're going renters. to generate more trash. Well, that, that makes sense. So if you are two people who own a nine bedroom house and then you're filling it with family <laughs> over some weekends, but then other families are filling it with their families. I'm just saying that it doesn't make sense, especially when you consider that probably a majority of the renters in, in the town of Lewis or Lewis Beach go out to dinner. They're not cooking. They're not producing a whole lot of trash. I'm just saying there's from carry my out. point of view. <laughs> there's well, carry there out. There's carry out. Okay, so I mean, I, I can tell you empirically but, but, that if we did not have large vacation rentals, right. That we would not need twice a week service. Okay. I can tell you that as a fact I, because I, we I can analyzed tell it. you that the number of nine bedroom homes in the town of Lewis is probably very few. So there you're talking about very, very few people who are generating more garbage. So that's that's a, that's an issue I just like you to think about. It's like, are they actually producing more trash than the average family? Let's not go to the extreme of nine bedrooms. Let's talk about three bedroom houses that are, are occupied year round with family or family members, et cetera. So that's, that's the trash issue. And then I would venture to guess that a lot of trash that's and, and parking problems that are being produced in Lewis beach are not by the renters themselves, but by day trippers coming here, parking and, and taking up all the spaces on the street, probably overflowing yep. the public trash cans. I would imagine that they're, you're not having an issue with <laughs> Day trippers coming onto private property and throwing their trash away. Yeah, I think. They, well, it, it could that be, happens, but, but I don't. That sounds right. like more of a trespassing issue than anything right. else to me. So, so that and and there again, as I pointed out before, the solution to the parking issue with you have uh, one house who has two parking spaces in front of it. Give them a permit. Do citywide parking permits. <laughs> a rent a rental is given. Uh, two parking. Uh, uh, permits, and if they show up with three cars, you're going to be subject to be ticketed, which is going to produce more more revenue for the city. So, mm -hmm. these are just some things I want you to think about. I want to go back to the original point, so I play on it one more time: is that is it fair to restrict some property owners from renting their property and not others? So, thank you. Got you. I don't, we, I don't believe we've talked about restricting nope. any property owners. It's about standards. We, we, well, we're we're well, trying to developing standards for. Well, just glad you're not restricting. Okay, we've got an awful lot of uh, outside thoughts okay. here on things okay. you think we're doing. Okay, it's so important for you to know that um, unless you know something we don't know, we're just gathering information, trying to come up with some solutions. We're not restricting, we're not barring, and as the paper said this morning, some kind of permit or something, we aren't there. We're gathering information, trying to figure out how to do this, and asking for your input so that we can do that. And we're starting with R3H. So And R3. And R3 is... Anybody else up there? So we've got people on Zoom, and then Lori Carter had her hand up. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see Lori. Hi, how are you? Robert Stevens. Okay. Hello? Hi, we can hear you. Yes, hi. My name is Robert Stevens. My, uh, my wife and I's full-time address is in Milton, Delaware, um, but we own a unit in the Ocean House condominium development, and I'm not sure if... if if that zoning comes under the discussion that's being had today, but I just wanted to offer input since you're in a gathering uh, mode right now. Mm -hmm. um, we, first of all, we've been very well served for five years by a professional management company there uh, in town. Um, we live in Milton. I've lived in Milton for about two years now. We've owned a home in Milton for 10. So we're 15 minutes away. <clears throat> um, we happen to use Gallo for our, our rental needs. Um, 
not to throw out names, I'm not, you know, pushing anything one way or the other, but I, I have heard comments about um, management company quality versus self-managed people that are hours away. So I do think there is a tremendous value in uh, a professional firm um, managing, and I'm not talking about marketing, the, the Verbos and the Airbnbs, you know, they provide marketing services. To my knowledge, they don't provide professional management. They don't do contracting. They're not there looking at uh, tenants and passing out rules of conduct. Um, but that is the service among others that we're provided with. And there's a tremendous value in that. And I think it's toward the ends of, of prosperity and community uh, by having that responsibility, even if there's a cost to it. And there is, uh, but there is value in it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to offer was in our case, and I know many, many people that do rent um, in the town, one of the things we do for our guests is we provide things like gifts, flowers, gift cards, things like that purchased from local merchants. And we have them there when our guests check in. So we do try to encourage patronage from the town and you know, to do our part. We're not just there to make money. We rent as individuals and not as a business. So um, as far as gathering input, the other, I'm sorry, one last thing. I applaud um, the consideration of different circumstances. I think when we generalize, we cause problems. Uh, for example, with Ocean House, we have our own trash pickup. We're responsible for that. We have uh, adequate parking for the number of units according to code. Um, so there are some differences with the properties and I understand uh, the logic in analyzing things from diff different perspectives. And I applaud the committee for doing that. So Thank Mr. You. Stevens, just so you know, you you are zoned um, B, or, um, B residential. Okay. So you are zoned the R3, which is one of the ones we're talking about today. Well, thank you for making me feel at home. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Lori. Good morning. My name is Lori Carter. I have lived in Lewis for about 28 years. My husband and I own the home that his parents bought in 1946 at 1510 Bay Avenue. We bought in 2014 when we purchased my husband's sister's half of the house that we would probably renovate it and live there full time. We had a young family who's now quickly growing up. And through many of the things that have been discussed today, we decided not to do that. And so we renovated inside. We decided to rent it for many reasons. And this is going to come from a totally different perspective. The number of cars in the parking lot is still the same that it always was. My in-laws live there raised two kids and it was always full of people they passed away we bought it in 14 we it's now at 22 and we have both privately and through vrbo until we had issues with craigslist scams now rent it through both ourselves and jack lingo realtor for whom my husband and i happen to work with as well have had zero problems this house is on the beach. There is not a huge rent compared to Rehoboth and other, uh, other communities, but I would say it's quite a bit of money for a few weeks out of the year. We don't want to live on Lewis Beach in the summer for the same reasons that all these people are talking about behind me and on Zoom. Um, I go back, Anne-Marie, to the parking that we discussed that my husband brought up to many of you three years ago, we sat through these meetings. Yes, there have been studies, but nothing has happened. Um, George talked about day trippers. I have watched the day trippers. I have watched the day trippers for years with no facilities in front of my home. I don't wanna talk about all the things that I've watched on 4th of July. I used to have great big, great family parties on the 4th of July week. We never rented our house for two weeks. We used it until the city started mandating what time bridges would open and close and all these kinds of crazy things. I have neighbors in Wolf Run, it took them four hours to get back home. So there's bigger things than just talking about trash pickup here. 
it is very concerning that we have been talking about the same things, just different faces in front of me for many years, but yet nothing's been implemented. We need to have permit parking. I happen to live in Wolf Run, just like some of these people behind me said that I come in, I manage it myself. I know who's there right now. I, I spend all winter there. I love the speech <laughs> from mid-September until about mid-May. And sometimes I don't even like it in mid-May. And it's because it's like a free-for-all. And it's not because these people are irresponsible. That's not what I see, although people behind me think maybe that. I don't see this as a party group. And one of the people on Zoom talked about they weed themselves out. I agree. Mm -hmm. Because if you're responsible and you manage your property, those people don't come. So I what do you see your issues as being? You said you have zero problems, but and then you mentioned you have permit The day park. trippers. Day no trippers. facilities, no permit parking. No infrastructure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't see renters noise. as an issue at all, okay. unless they're not managed. And again, many other people have already brought up very good points that I won't repeat. Yeah, no, I just want to make but sure I got the day right. trippers and no place. They park for free. They dump their trash for free. And trust me, they're not representing the restaurants at night. Mm -hmm. Those people are going back to wherever they came from for the day. But the people that rent support our city and love our city. Look at the development. And again, I'm repeating what others have already said. Look at the development and all the people moving here. I got you. What were you saying? I was just gonna say, like, totally hear you. Just want you to know that the charge of this committee can't can't help with most of your concerns. And, and but I agree with but your concerns. But it's a city issue one. that keeps. It's a different well, vein. It I guess. may very well be, but like yeah. we have a charge. And I that's understand that. I understand that. I will support short term rentals thank or you. long term rentals. Thank you, because I don't think that's your issue. Okay, thank you. And it's important again, guys. I understand everybody has issues. It looked like we had something in the comments. But the bottom yeah. line is that we really want to stick with what we came here for and we want to walk out of here with something. Okay. And I understand your concerns. We really, really do. But let's try to stay the course. Or we're not going to get anything done. And we've got to get this done before the season starts next year. Okay. So if you have something and you just want to complain, write me. Okay. So we, we've got something in the Q&A, and I'm going to ask, it's Andrew Ratner, uh -huh. and we're going to ask, could you please put in the Q&A what your um, property address is? Um, but the, the comment is, I think it might be wise to take some minor measures first to get more of a clear idea of how many rentals there are before taking larger measures. We already have that number. <laughs> right. We have that number. I'm not sure if you heard, sorry, what was his first name? Andrew um, Ratner. Andrew, I'm not sure if you heard earlier okay. in the meeting when we when we reiterated that number and that number was brought up um, at one of our previous uh, meetings. And it's two commercial properties on Second Street. Um, but the, the number of rentals on Lewis is a known number because you must have a business license, uh, sorry, a rental, is it called a rental license? A rental license to rent and you must pay taxes on that. And so that is a quantitative number that the city right. does have. It's 450 it's as of for 2022. Four, five, zero. Yes. Four, five, zero. Um, we don't, but I would assume you have addresses. So that right. could so, be something so, that be. So uh, again, our, our accounting system isn't it, for some for some reason we can't just dump the information into something where we can sort it. So we're going to have to do some some manual steps, you know, joining spreadsheets and stuff to do it. So that is something we're pulling together. We're going to look at number um, again and where where they are, but also the revenue. Now, uh, while we can't definitively determine how many based on the information we collect, how many are short-term versus long-term. Um, we do know that those that pay a much smaller GRRT are likely your long-term rentals because if you're renting for a thousand a month versus a thousand a week, you're gonna have less income. So you're saying no? Yeah, I, I'm, I, okay. no, I- Because some people only rent one or two weeks. That's true, good point, yeah. good point. No, I didn't I even think about that. I don't okay. think so at all. 
Adrian, I think you had a great statistic for us, but like, I personally believe that if I rented my house year round, 12 months out of the year, my income would be higher oh, than the okay. short term. Okay. That, uh, from and a realtor's Ad perspective, is that- For the record, doing? Adrian's shaking her head, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so my, my intu intuition is incorrect. We don't mind being corrected. <laughs> All right, so now where do we want to go in, in getting back to the basic quality of life challenges that faces R3H? And in terms of, of making some kind of decision here. Now, we've heard people, and we're going to hear the same kind of thing. And if you are going to repeat something that somebody already said, think twice before you come to it, because we, we got that part. And, okay. And again, we have this, this form that's open on our website. You Are can submit the detailed information. Um, you know, one of the things it, we ask a series of questions before we kind of get into it are, you know, about your residency. If you are a resident, where do you live? Um, do you live near a short-term rental? Do you own or operate a short-term rental? If you own or operate one, where is it? Um, if, if you own a short-term rental, is it owner occupied? Um, and then we have three statements that kind of gauge whether you think there need to be very tight restrictions or almost no restrictions. Um, and then ask about um, whether you support different regulations for different areas of the community. So, and then, and then a big box where you can write whatever you want. So so, this is gonna help us gather and, what it right, is. And we are yeah. posting the comments received through this, as well as any other free form comments submitted, we're posting them all on the website. So, so you all as the public have access to the same information um, provided by the public that, that the committee has. Okay. But I encourage you to, to you know, go to the website and, and fill it in. It's, you can get to it through our homepage. There's a news flash where there's a news flash about this. And then, or it's under news and announcements is what it's called. And then um, if you go under the government tab all the way to the right, the column all the way to the right, you can go to short-term rentals. Okay, I will take your comment. Good morning. My name's Audrey Ellen Brody. I own two units at Ocean House, bought them last year. So excited to be down in Lewis that I realized I couldn't rent one and wanted to stay in it, so I had to buy the one next door. So now I'm poor, and the only way I'm going to be able to afford it is to rent them out. I understand the drama about lifestyle, but I will tell you that um, I also am a realtor uh, for 20 years. Statewide, we manage 520 individual homes and townhomes. So I know all about not complying and, and tenants being horrible. I would implore that as you do explore how you're gonna control the situation. And if this is all to try to generate any level of revenue to compensate for the extra services needed, that you do it by a violation standard. Violations are very specific to those who are doing things wrong. I think in our lives, we have enough opportunity where we're punished as a, a total for a few people not doing things right. So if you were to establish a violation process, I think that would clean up the situations and also make sure those people are paying that should be paying because they're not being good citizens. Thank you. Thank you. What was your address again? Uh, I have two. Um, <laughs> it is 100 East Savannah Road. This is Audrey just spoke. Units 4D and 4E. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to, we, we actually did discuss enforcement and it is a great mm -hmm. tactic. Yeah. yeah. And, and that would lie on. Yeah, Brody, well, with homeowners that won't listen to us as their management company. We're great at what we I do. Agree. Gallo yeah. is great at what they do. I love them yeah. on Sundays. I live one point, I actually am living in Wolf Point. I live 1.8 miles <laughs> from my unit and I don't even want to know, you okay. know, and they call me on Sundays. And it's just fabulous. Okay. So those who aren't complying are really the ones that need to come to the plate. Oh, it works. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so what do we want to take R3H again? We keep, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for that. Now let's just think about the quality of life again as it relates to R3H. 
and the fact that it is a historic district. So do we want to go down this path and say what we feel or how do we want to handle this? Can I start? Of course, Winnie. Okay, I'm going to start with um, the zones and the different districts. Um, I feel like I'm a component for every everything should be fair. And it, somebody else had brought it up in the audience. I think taking each individual zone and, and saying this zone here should have you know, 5% rentals and this zone over here shouldn't have any rentals. I think that will create a problem. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'd like to do, in my opinion, for I am a homeowner, I also have a business in Lewis. I, I feel that we have to, as a group, we have to work together and we have to be fair. Every individual has the rights um, and they should be the same. I don't believe the historical district on the canal side or on the beach side should be any different. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I feel. I do believe in enforcement. Um, I, I, that's where I think we should stand. And, and the management side has been great. Everyone that has stood before us, it is about management and responsibilities that lie on the owners. That's what I feel. Okay, go. It's a little tough to make a call because I'm not sure what we are even thinking about. Well, we're thinking about <laughs> putting in place. So, well, so I, to make a decision about whether I would want to put something in place for one area versus another when I don't know what the one Okay. Well, first is. of all, just answer that basic question. Okay. And that was exactly what Winnie just talked about. She doesn't feel that, well, we should look at this historic district and say we should just make that separate from something else. So give me opinion on that. Then take me to the next step, which has to do with the quality of life that we've talked about, whether we're talking about policing or whether we're talking about the trash, whether we're talking about what we need to get to a point where we feel like what we're doing is equal. So I, I generally think I'm aligned with Winnie on like, let's let's stay consistent here. However, you know, I would reserve the right that when we get to the actual things that we may be suggesting to council, there may be one that just lends itself to, to being more relevant to one area versus another. Fair so I'm gonna hold that. Um, on quality of life, I, you know, I think we, I think we have to dig in here. I think we have to decide. You know, well, let's just talk about some, it from basic things. So did we decide last week that our recommendation is gonna be that there will be a local contact. I feel like yes. we made yes. sort of one decision. Yes, yes. We are going to Which say still that. needs to be defined, but yes. Yeah, but okay. yes, but we okay. did decide on it. So we defined what a short-term rental was. Correct. We said we're going to ask our rentals to designate whether they are short-term or long-term. And, and you mentioned that you would that. like as an owner to be included in that. That I remember. Right. So we're, And we're going to define a local contact. Right. Um, so that there is account local accountability. Right. Right. Um, in my belief, that goes a long way. Um, and, and what needs to be done here. Now, if we want to tackle some more specific issues around specifically trash, or if we want to delve into parking, or I know, you know, there was sort of occupancy was put on the table. Um, I think we could, we could talk about some of that. Um, I will not be a proponent and will not support any measure that blocks a property owner right in any place in Lewis okay. to be able to rent their property. So I will just go on that. Like, I will not be um, in favor of that in any way, shape, or form. I second that. <laughs> so, so to your point, I mean, I guess it, as it relates to parking, occupancy, looking at the beach context, do you, are, do you have thoughts about parking minimums for short-term rentals or occupancy or somehow relating parking and... and Yes. bedrooms or some, you know yeah, just specifically on parking on the beach i don't have a, a large concern i don't feel like i have heard many people come to any of these meetings okay. and voice concerns about parking on the beach related to short-term rentals i know there are concerns for right. that, but we heard our concerns there are there are parking right. issues on lewis beach um but i don't know that i've heard anybody mention that that short-term rentals are putting pressure on parking on Lewis Beach. I know that we have heard a different story in town. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I think we, we might want to think about that one a little bit more. Uh, on parking specifically, though, I struggle with how um, 
as just a short-term rental committee, we could really help make a dent in that situation. It seems to be a larger issue for the city and um, you know, a permitting system would probably actually help with the short-term rentals. Because if, if we even thought about enforcement, I mean, how would you enforce it? The poor police officer that gets the call from, from Kim saying, you know, my, my neighbor's next door, I know they've got six cars out here and the policeman shows up. And if the rule is they can only have three, like how does well, nobody's that's when in the car? Course, that's when we have to establish enforcement that keeps coming up over and over and over again, Tanya. That's for us to decide if we're going to do that. And if we're going to do that, we do have an enforcement officer. I don't call them an officer. We do have a person that does that. It's for us to guide them and tell them what they can and cannot do. I, I understand that, Caroline, but I'm just thinking that, you know, nobody's in these cars, even if you had an enforcement officer. Like, so now that the Kim says this car belongs to a renter, but, you know, it could just belong to the person that shot day on tripper. Second Street right. or a day yeah. tripper. So it, well, it, I feel like parking's probably going to come back to permitting, but I'm happy to have the discussion. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think that we can differentiate on street parking versus whether you're a day tripper right. or a renter. Right. It, That'd be impossible. The, the question is, should there be a minimum number of parking spaces uh, for a short-term rental so that you don't have a spillover? And, and that we can decide. Right. And then I, so, so that one could be one where we, we might want to make a different decision for a beach versus town, just because there's, I, I don't know, but right. potentially, right. If we and, and again, you don't have to solve all these now. I mean, really, right. you're, you're going to have to take time to digest everything mm -hmm. you're hearing and reading. So, right. That's not just in, in the right way. Yeah. Just so, general thought. I think, I think we could, we could think we could look into the occupancy issue we could look into the the parking issue right and 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 i think we could look into trash mm -hmm. potentially right um right. i'll just use that as like a generalized because trash. that is an issue right also for the homes that um have very limited parking in the parking uh, like a driveway we had someone in an earlier meeting had said something about people were parking on the front yards and not in the driveway because it was a spillover i think that needs to be addressed down on the lewis beach side because we're i'm seeing i've been down there and i've seen residents homes that have all these cars and now they're parking in the little dune area and i'm thinking that's part of like uh, I don't believe they are day trippers. I believe that they were rentals at one house. They were parking everywhere they could mm -hmm. on this one piece of property. So I'm thinking addressing the parking. From an occupancy yes, point uh, that, that, the, that the driveway is designated for parking and the front yard is not. I, I don't know how we do it, but that's also becoming a problem. Yeah, I, I would address it from an occupancy point of yeah. view. Yeah, definitely. Don, what do you think? Thanks. Great discussion. Um, I kind of agree with, with Winnie, uh, but not completely. Oh, On what? The parking. Oh, On the parking? R3, R3, R3. R3. Okay. Oh. oh, we always have trouble so with it, that one. Sometimes it, it just picks you up. There, there it is. There it is. Um, and I think the parking issue that... Um, um, let me make... Lori let, brought let up let is sure also... Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. When you say you agree with Winnie, are you talking about as it relates to R3 and R3, R3 and that you don't feel that you should differentiate between the... I think we do have to apply one standard to, okay. to all. However, I have, we have to look at the density limits in, in downtown, or not density limits, the density of downtown versus the density of, of uh, Lewis Beach. <clears throat> and if there's a, a difference, I don't know that there is. Uh, but the density would also uh, limit the number of parking spaces available. Uh, the permit parking thing, I know the city's been down that road several times a couple of years ago. It really made some progress, but there's still work to be done on that. I think the Lewis line is a great, a great help or support for that. Um, so I believe that as, and this is sort of echoed with some of the earlier conversations, we need the proper oversight, accountability, and licensing, maybe a permit requirement, so that permit can then be enforced through some type of a, uh, either the police department or other city officials. Um, I think the city already has the ability to track short-term rentals and through, through the host compliance, yeah, we're gonna, we're so that's helpful. Get even um, better on that. And the determination on whether the 5% fee increases or not, I don't know if that's up to, left up to our committee or the, the council and mayor to make that decision. Um, 
So Don, I, I uh, like, would would the parking like let's say we do a license like you know when they get their license for rentals, um, and they have four bedrooms. Right. How would you limit like parking? I just want to hear. I mean, I think it's something that should be addressed. You know, what I don't want to see is what's happening in the COVID. Right. The entire front yards become parking lots. Mm -hmm. Remove all the landscaping. I, I would I hate think, to see that anywhere in Lewis. Yeah, well, I happening. think we deal with it from an occupancy point of view. Yeah, yeah that's where I was setting, yeah. like with the occupancy. Yeah, I what are those caps? I mean, a B and B has a cap of five bedrooms. Uh, uh, what's the cap for for an air for a short term rental? I don't know. I don't have that answer to that. And why aren't the same standards being applied to uh, short term rentals as they're applied to? B and B's. So the, the I've asked that question before, building, but no one's answered it. So. The building code, the building code, still uh, views short-term rentals as single-family homes, so they so they don't that. come under that that more restrictive standard. So, um, I mean, again, part of it is the people that are renting are renting as a unit; they're not renting a room. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it it just comes into a different category under the building code. Um, and I, I also just repeating what we've talked about procedures for handling complaints and suspending or revoking permits, having that having that process in place would be helpful as well. Whatever that looks like, we're still determining what that is. Um, I know we've talked about density limits on on like how many short-term rentals are allowed per per block or, or per neighborhood. I don't think we've really delved into no, that too too know, much as far as lim limiting that. And I still think, you know, based on some of the research I've done and I think Jeffrey's done, there are towns that have adopted density uh, limits. Has the Jeffrey? We haven't heard anything though as it relates to R3. I mean, I, I haven't heard- R3 is a whole different ballgame. Right, but that's what we're talking about. But now. R3H is- what we're, right. okay. I see what what we're talking about. So I wanted to, uh, I'll go back to you, Don. Go ahead, finish what you were saying. Um, well, my, my feeling is still that short-term rentals should operate under the same standards as other businesses do. So whatever those standards are, those operational standards for fire and safety, uh, that they should be followed. You see short-term rentals should be Say that again to me. Well, a short-term rental essentially is a business run okay. out of a residential mm -hmm. home. Okay. Why aren't they held to the same level of standards as any other businesses? So you're saying fire and occupancy. Well, um, yeah, like well, if the safety, fire marshal came sure. into a house and they said, we have four bedrooms, you know, you need all your, your, um, your fire stuff available. I'm you know, just throwing the question about? out. I'm not saying that's, yeah, the, that's the answer. That's what I would you. Yeah, I, mean, it's a, I think it's something we need to look at. Right. The, the, the answer is that, um, you know, under both the state fire prevention regulations and the international building code, every commercial isn't like a flat thing under the, the building and fire codes. So everything under building and fire codes is comes under an occupancy classification. So your occupancy classification for a nightclub or a place that serves alcohol is gonna be different than it is for um, a, a, a small cafe that only serves breakfast and lunch. So, when you look at both the fire prevention regulations, which are at the state, but the state also utilizes the National Fire Prevention Association. So that's the, the international standard and the ICC, which is the International Code Council codes, short-term rentals are considered single family homes. So they're not, they're not, they don't enter a more restrictive or, um, yeah, a more restrictive occupancy classification under those codes than any other single family home. And we are in the process of um, preparing for adopting the 2021 ICC codes, which are the building codes and the 2021 ICC codes, again, do not look at short-term rentals differently than they do any other 
building classification um, because it is one household unit so they occupying look at it, as a it. Business. They do not. It, it's not it, the the building codes don't care whether you're making money or not making money, whether you're charging or not charging. You know, if you're a nonprofit that you know, for instance, um, Elks Clubs, American Legion, you know, they're a nonprofit. It's not about whether they're making money. It's mm -hmm. about what is happening there. And because so they're looking at the, the function, not the not the financial implications. So, you know, just like the the Elks is required to have a fire suppression system if the if they you know exceed certain things in terms of capacity and serving alcohol it's the same way that the you know the um it, individual homes are considered individual homes even if they're rented out to a large family so that's coming out of the building codes that's the building All codes the and the fire codes but so that would coincide so that, with if you rent the building code is actually covering yes the fire oh i see yes because it's yeah home. if it's yeah, that's what it as a home. Mm -hmm. right you know whether and not a business you know the weeks that i spend in my home with my multi-generational family and i use it i use the property the same way that my renters do so if we believe as a city that we've got a fire and safety issue with our homes in Lewis in general, we should care about that, whether it's a homeowner in it, a homeowner who has their grandmother visiting, a homeowner who's given their, their home to another family to use, or a homeowner who is renting that house to someone else. It's still people living in a home. There is literally no difference. And that's what Lewis is doing. They're keeping it all as a whole. Like mm -hmm. when you build and a house a in Lewis now, right. it's the same building code mm -hmm. for, for everything. Yes. Pretty much. Well, thanks for that clarification. And, and, yeah, really. and new homes are now required to have a fire suppression system. Yes, <laughs> so. that we know. That we know. Yeah, thanks for the clarification. So I, I think R2 and R2H and R3 and R3H have similar de density um, considerations in, in Lewis. Uh, so I could get behind supporting the same requirements or mm -hmm. uh, it, it, whatever we're putting together here for both of those districts. Um, R4 and R4H and R5, we may have to uh, look at different yeah, I'm not, considerations. I'm not even deal I know. With them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just a couple more thoughts. Um, um, I, um, I still would like to get a number on the total number of dwelling units in the city of Lewis. We know there's about 415 in in the history or in the, the old portion of the town. How many total units are in the entire city? So I'm curious if there's 450 rentals, how what's the percentage of of rentals out of the entire number of dwellings? I think we're going to get the specifics of all of that stuff. We don't have that right now. We are aware of the fact that we need to have right, right. exactly what it is we have so that we can intelligently make a decision. Yeah, I, and I think, you know, so I, I then, know where you are, I understand that, but we and, don't have that right now, but we're uh, going to get it. And, and, and one other regulatory tool that I'd like to share that I think may be helpful is just as the uh, Office of Alcohol and Beverage sends out a notice notification to neighborhoods near a restaurant that's applying for a license, mm. I think it would be helpful for the residents to receive a similar type of notification that, that short-term rental is going to be operated within their neighborhood so they can be aware of it. So whatever that radius might be, it might be three or four blocks. You're saying that you feel that the... Neighbors on the block should be receiving a notice that tells yeah. them that somebody's renting on their block. Well, that they, Is that what you That, you're that a short-term short rental license has, has been issued. Been, right. How do you feel about that? Without a complex. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, 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 what's the what's purpose. The I have a rental on my block. And, and I you're don't need have... somebody to tell me I see it. Fights and it's but gonna cause it's gonna I mean, be not just like but similar to a restaurant serving serving alcohol, but it's not like that. I'm sorry. Uh, but there is notification so the neighbors could know if in case they might be impacted by that license. I think the same could apply because in our neighborhood or in some other neighborhoods in town, there is there they're being impacted. 
by a short-term rental. Okay, let me put it another way, because I remember this coming up in a different light, and I think it had to do with um, uh, the rental signs, and it had to do with uh, a phone number or something on a rental signs. Remember we had that conversation as it relates mm -hmm. to that issue? Like a property out. manager? I don't, I don't want to know uh, the person on my block is renting. Uh, it, it, if it becomes a problem for me, fine. I know that there's a rental on my block, but the bottom line is that I don't need something coming from the city telling me that. What I would like to know more than anything else is who my contact is if I have a problem. And as has been brought up before, we go right back to, uh, we need to know if that person is around, what that number is. I think that point of contact, I understand what you're saying and I get the sign business. I don't think it's something I, I'm gonna See, I think agree with. I think I'm gonna I, deal yeah, with I think the only thing done with that, that says, with, with what you're saying with that is, um, I have a house and I'm, I'm on Market Street and I, I know now I have to send out letters to all my neighbors within yeah within a hundred, you know, blocks. The problem with that is I wouldn't, I would just say every person that's coming in my house is my family. So there now we've cut our, our legs off. Lewis isn't gonna get income because we're gonna have people that aren't gonna be telling the truth because they don't wanna send out information that their house is a rental. It becomes a target a little bit yes, in my opinion. Yes. That's just my opinion. Okay, we got you. Yeah, we got you. We got you. I, I just I just want to mention a little bit about neighbor notification, okay. uh, which is there are really two ways that that communities do it. It's not, I would say, it happens. It's 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 not uncommon, but it's not it's not a universal thing. Uh, really, you would only do it for for two reasons. One is if the permitting process has some sort of public comment uh, series, which if you have say a conditional use process, some forum for neighbors to show up to hear that a permit has been applied for so that they can come in and say, oh, you know, they've been great, you know, give them this permit or, you know, they've already, they've always had problems, you know, and that's their way to, in the same way that any conditional use uh, uh, public process would occur. So that's one way that can happen. The other way is really just to disseminate a local contact person. So if you don't have any sort of mediating group, whether that's the police or a, a code enforcement official, uh, it's a way to give <laughs> some limited contact information to the immediate neighbors usually um, to uh, to be able to call in uh, issues, which I know a lot of hosts already will do that on their own. They will give out their information saying, hey, if you see some problems, call me, I'll, I'll attend to it. So those are the two ways you see uh, something like neighbor notification. Um, I think to your point, if you don't have some sort of, of public input process to these permits, telling people that there's going to be a, a license on their block, I don't think does does a lot for them. Um, and yeah, so those those are really where you see it. Um, but it's not it's not universal. But it is it's not uncommon. How about that idea we talked about, uh, Jeffrey, about um, signs in front of the properties? Is, is yeah. A lot of places don't don't like signs because they think it degrades the residential character of of neighborhoods. Um, obviously, there are places that have historically had signs um, in vacation communities, you know, with the name of the property or the, the the renting agent. So that if if it already exists, you can sometimes add to it. Uh, I have seen some places. New Orleans, where I live, is one where they say you should put out a little kind of sign in your window when there's a guest present that sounds good but it's incredibly difficult to do any kind of actual enforcement on because you know you have to hold up today's newspaper or something to prove that they didn't do it on a certain day mm -hmm. it, it it just doesn't work so a lot of times i think you know now especially people have moved really either to um doing some sort of neighbor notification or doing things uh online plenty of places will post uh the list of their permits other places, you know, want to keep that more private, but say, here's the phone number we have, the town has the list of everyone. If you tell us your address, we know who to call. So that, that's usually how that, that shakes out. Your Airbnbs, and I mean, you're suggesting that people could put a sign out and say, I'm an Airbnb on their property, instead of doing um, like a full blown letter saying, hey, I'm going to rent my house on this block. It's usually not. It's not either or, 
it, they, I think a lot of places kind of take it separately by saying, you know, a local contact person that that information is going to be through the permit and there might be requirements about noticing. Uh, for the signage is a lot more about, I think, the visual quality of the neighborhood. It, most places don't really rely on those signs to give a lot of it real information. It's more just like, can you have a sign? Like, could I put out a sign in front of my short term rental that says Falcon Crest or whatever? And a lot of places say we don't want you to do that because we think that's a step too commercial. It gets into sign law. Sign law is a very strange piece of law that uh, somehow always goes to the Supreme Court. So a lot of places say we want to make it at least look like it's still all residential, like full time residential. And so we don't want to have those kind of those shingles out to make it seem like that maybe there's some some businesses going on. At the same time, lots of places have that as part of their visual character already. And so they say, well, then we're just going to continue on. Thank you, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, the now. signs I've noticed, I think, are for long term or longer term rentals. Yeah, than, let, than let, let's, let's just make one decision at least today uh, uh, as it relates to signs. OK, I'm not in favor of signs being put out on a property, but I am in favor of some way having the police know who the contact is. Mm -hmm. OK, you I'm, I'm in favor of that. Yes, the local contact that is mm -hmm. de designated on the, mm -hmm. on the, what do we call it, a license, rental license application? Yeah, that's perfect. The be. bottom line is, and, and as you said before, you'd like the owners too, <clears throat> that's fine with me. But the bottom line is that we don't want anything out in front of the property. We're in agreement here? I agree yeah. with that. Okay, fine. That's one. Maybe an online, online platform that could support that I'm too. I'm good with that. Um, the second thing is that are we on agreement that we feel like we shouldn't differentiate between uh, R3 and R3H as it relates to it's an historic district and we would treat it differently, be we're talking about R3 or R3H or in the city. Give me your opinion, please. I, sure, Winnie. My opinion is I think keeping it um, equal amongst all districts, but basing it upon parking occupancy, because I think if we're downtown Lewis and there's very limited parking, that um, permitting and parking goes hand in hand with that district. But also it's playing out in, in on Lewis Beach too, because you're seeing these cars pull up on the dunes. Um, what we're doing I, I think everything decide. should be we're equal. Talking. Yeah, okay. I think everything should be equal. Okay. That's what I feel. Okay. One rule that applies to all. It's mm -hmm. short and sweet. Thank you. Don. Well, that's to be determined. I mean, general commercial and mixed housing, R5, I don't know the same rules can apply. Uh, do you have an opinion on that, Anne-Marie? Um, I mean, I, I, I think we need to, a, a general commercial, we probably don't have a, well, we could potentially have some rentals. Um, but right now, I don't think we have anything in terms of um, residential and general commercial. So I think there's not a whole lot to look at. Um, our, our five, again, those are the areas that are either um, townhouse communities or mm -hmm. apartment or condominium communities where um, they're, they're very concentrated. They typically have either a management company or an HOA or a condominium association that kind of manages those things. So you don't have the spillover effects um, that you do in, in some of the other areas. Thank you. All right, I'm trying to clear up everything. The signs, differentiation between historic versus the other so that it doesn't come across as though we are favoring one more than the other. Are we on the same sheet of music on all of this before I just go to the next thing? Because I want to make sure that these are the things we're going to then take and look at in more detail, right? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Now, in terms of, of the services, let's talk about the services, the trash and, and the parking. I think we're going to deal with it, if I'm not mistaken, as an occupancy thing. Do we feel that way? Because we can't solve the city's problem parking. I've been there, done that, and I came up with the other idea. So let's talk about it from occupancy as it relates to the the, the rentals. That it should be what? 
upper like I guess what I've noticed in other rentals I would really like I hate putting you on the spot Adrian but you're the rental agent of the world that I know but if you could come up and let them know occupancy per parking you know how how you guys handle it in your office Adrian is also um, a veteran from Rehoboth she's gotten all that knowledge of parking uh, it it's Thanks. sorry about that um, Adrian Gallagher <laughs> I'm a resident on McPhee Street, 120 McPhee, and I'm also a property manager. Uh, we base occupancy on number of bedrooms. It's generally mm -hmm. two to a bedroom and then two to an additional living space. Um, if it happens to have a living room and a loft, there could be two living spaces. So there's no hard, fast rule. There's no um, regulations stipulating that. It's just a general rule that we go by when okay. we are advising owners to their occupancy. Um, parking, we have to go by what the driveway is. We don't, um, you don't do it by room. Mm -mm, no, huh. no. Mm -hmm. So if the driveway holds four cars, we tell the guests they have, you know, up to four car parking. That's it. We don't hmm. tell them that they have any additional parking, um, not having permit parking in the city, you know, they can park wherever they want. So they could bring eight cars if they so choose to do. Um, but we, how do you restrict parking? if you don't have a parking permit system in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And I do have a question, if you don't mind. Sure, of course in do. the last meeting, we talked about the definition of short-term rentals, mm -hmm. and you're going to speak to council. Um, maybe 20 minutes ago, someone said we had a definition of short-term no. rentals, but we don't, correct? No, 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 no. What we, that we haven't number? settled on it. Okay. No, no, no. It, it, it remains the same as you heard us before. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're gathering it all, putting it together. I thought so. We'll I do... just... Yeah, sure I I said that. Does Dewey or it was her fault. from your from your old I mean from old school do they have do they go by bedrooms for parking or I can't remember. Um, so Rehoboth always had when I was there permit parking and the not homeowner, by bedroom. Well, the homeowner would receive two stickers for their mm -hmm. cars to use and then they would receive two hang tags so if their driveway fit three cars then technically the renter would have five parking spots they'd have three in the driveway and then two to use on the street mm -hmm. but they were not designated parking spots um, Rehoboth also has more delineated spaces so you can pretty much tell where you can park and where you can't park where Lewis is a free-for-all mm -hmm. um, so that's why I think you have so many problems on Lewis Beach you know people parking where they should so explain the stickers so the stickers would go on someone's car and i could go down to lewis beach and park with that sticker if we had permanent parking down if you there. are a resident resident okay then you would get stickers okay so but that's I, all residents that's that's all, all residents, residents whether yeah. you live in town or you live on lewis beach okay um, your hang tags would be what you would give to your your guests you could purchase outside of also getting being a homeowner correct okay. or you know if i drive into rehoboth today and i want to park on the street i can buy a day big day pass right by a week pass the season okay. pass. how do you handle yours large driveway okay. <laughs> I, I mean I just, how many how many no, i do home? i do we do have a um limit i think we six vehicles is what we say for ah. for ours okay um okay how many bedrooms on, do you have on vrbo and I can only speak to VRBO because it's the only one that I use. Okay. Right. But on VRBO, you can designate that in your house rules, your number of cars, as well as your number of people. Oh. Right. So you can. You don't put it on your license. You just, you're, that's just a rule of your home when you're running it. Or license. could you put it on the license as six cars when you permitted on the property when you, like on your. On the Lewis license for rental. Oh, well, I mean, it does not required today. So it's I mean, not required. Not yeah. Spot okay. That. This, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so my, my concern here is that I guess if there was a driveway, it could be fairly easy, but without a permit system, I don't know how we would implement this rule or try to enforce it. Because mm -hmm. like I said, like, you know, you're going to have neighbors call in. Clearly, you know, a neighbor's going to see a renter's going to come in. They're going to see them park the car, they're going to see them go in the house or whatever, and they're going to see all these cars and they know the rule six and they they think they've counted eight. They call the police, the police come out, the police can't, like, how do you yeah, get a permit system? I don't, do think, do I don't think that we can 
it, it, I don't think that we can generate a rule that says that renters can't bring more than X number of cars. What you could say is that you have to have X number of off street parking spaces. So you could say, and, and it, it could relate to the number of bedrooms. Like right now under just a standard residential, every, every residential unit is required to have two off street parking spaces. Two off street parking spaces is really not enough if you have a large family, multi-generational family. So, so do you say you need you know, one parking space per bedroom in a short-term rental. And, and it would, you know, require that people um, provide for that on the property. So it, it doesn't rely on spilling over. So then if a property owner who's been renting for 15 years has no off-street parking right now, they would just be hosed. They wouldn't be able well, to Well, so I think that's a, a question. I think what we need to to figure out is what are the standards that we want going forward for occupancy. right and if that puts something into a non-conforming status how do you manage the non-conforming status can it remain non-conforming in perpetuity can it remain non-conforming for a period of 10 years i mean th those are things that you would have to come up with if something if if we do something that puts something into a a, a, a non-conformity, we would need to come up with, this is how you document that you have non-conforming use and, and we make sure that, you know, we get the word out so that people know that they need to, to come in to, to get that. And then, um, you know, a lot of non-conformities just you lose through attrition when it stops being rented, it can't start again. Um, it, I mean, that, that's one way to do it. Anne Marie, sorry, you guys, there's a couple comments on Zoom. Okay. Um, the first one is Robert Stevens. He said, it's not a question, it's just a comment. The neighbor notification process is a very slippery slope. If you are required to post signs or inform people about renting, where does the notification requirement end? People that rent homes are entitled to quiet enjoyment as well. Oh, sorry. There are also Thanks many developments that specifically restrict signs being posted. If a neighbor has a question or a problem, then they should be prepared to act, even if it has to be a local contact. So then Frankie Bradshaw has two things. Um, first asked, have you made a firm decision to require local contact? And then remember that Airbnb and VRBO do not require any management, do not provide any management services. And then she also said, I'm referring to the police knowing local contact number discussion. Anything else? That's it. The only okay. thing I would just state for that Airbnb and VRBO are just a platform on which yeah, people yeah. rent. So right. yeah, I, I'm right. not sure how that's actually relevant to the conversation. This would she, be. She was saying that it's not like. It, right. She it, was saying, please know that these two things are not managed. Right. Do not provide management services. That's right. Right. Okay. So if you're, if you, you just list if you contract with Gallo, because right. we always pick on Adrian, <laughs> if you contract with Gallo, that's a management company. They don't just list it. They, right. it, if you do VRBO, you still have to manage it. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's the point. Okay. Look, we're running a little long on time now. So uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to take two, two hands. I see. Oh, hi. How are you? I didn't know you were here. When, I'll take you again, and then I'll take you. Uh, I just, Allison White, 206 Massachusetts. And yes, sir. Hawks, I, um, I just wanted to say that on the parking issue, back to what Laurie Carter was saying, I'm not sure that we know that the parking issue on Lewis Beach is due to the rental, the short-term rentals. So I wouldn't want to see us restrict, you know, or, or go that route without doing the actual study of whether that's actually the problem, because I do agree that it seems to be not even day trippers, but people that live somewhere else in town and come down and park on Lewis Beach to enjoy the beach. So I'm not sure that it's a problem to be looked at. Um, if it is, by all means, we 
bought the property. It had three parking spaces. The next door neighbor said, sometimes there's more cars. So we had an extra parking space because we had the space. So I'm not saying um, it couldn't be a problem, but do we know it's at the actual problem? It sounds like there's bigger well, we, problems. We know oh, scarcity we know. of parking is a problem. Yeah. That, so that we know. And I don't think that we can, I don't think that we can blame any constituency because what we know is there's a finite amount of parking. So but we can't. The only people that would be restricted are the short-term rentals, not the day trip. I think it's so. just well, somehow it's, parking committee has to, to look at permitting. It, it, so and that is that's so not parking, a, yeah. just as hard. a to, to look at in this committee without. Yeah. We're not. Well, right. So right. as right. an update, no. on that it's a different ballgame we have been looking at the the whole implementation of a permit system the number of pieces and the degree the number of comments we received were just too much for us to be able to get anything done before this season so the plan is to to pick up where we were we implemented some interim measures for this season and the hope is that we can bring something to, to council to act on in terms of a permit system for Lewis Beach. But that's not for this. next season. <laughs> so, right. I just want to again. Okay. This, that's not this. We keep going back to parking. I don't want to go back. Right. To but just so people realize, it hasn't been dropped. It's still no. No. It's it's still it's there. It's hard. live. And if you have a problem, take the Lewis line. There you go, Leanne. <laughs> Um, Leanne Wilkinson, I live at 130 Jefferson Avenue. I have, I think, seven properties in town that I rent mostly year round. Uh, I have one. Okay, now we're talking about R3 and R3H right, right now. I've got a couple over on okay, the beach. Okay, that's important. A couple right. over on the beach, but I don't know if you're counting Cape Shores as. Yeah. As yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have one at Cape yes. Shores, which is a weekly rental. Okay. And I have one on Cedar Avenue, which I rent year round because I like to do that. It's easier for right. me. So go. But that's not what I really. I want to say first. This is a really great idea that we're trying to figure something out. And I, I can, I know everybody's worried that you're going to try to restrict rentals, and I don't think that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to figure out how things can work better. Correct. Which they need to, and it comes down to the owner of the house and the realtor who's managing it, taking a active. Role, role in making sure that the people who are in their homes are being respectful to the rest of the people that live here. And just, I don't know if this is the exact number, but I think we've got 2,830 something properties in the city limits of Lewis. That counts condos, townhouses, single we family houses. Yeah. So if we have 450 rentals and we've got 2,854 house or properties then we've got 15 percent rentals so 15 percent of these people are renting we don't know if they're renting weekly right. seasonally mm -hmm. or year round but it's easy to find out somebody should hire you guys should get some interns from the high school that need to get some credits and get them on here and figure all this stuff out they can go online they can figure it out you don't have to pay them and oh, that's um, good <laughs> get them get them here they they they're good on researching things on the computer it's pretty easy to figure out whether something's being rented year round and we that need that yeah so it's just i think getting the, the information is the thing that we need so we can figure out what to do exactly we're not trying to restrict yeah. anything we're just trying to get right. the facts and, and, it, and it's really the right good way. that we're talking about it to try to get it yeah. so it can be better for thank everyone. you thank you thank you i appreciate it look guys uh uh jenny i love you you, you have one minute <laughs> Because we have to close out. I'm in Nine I, Massachusetts I Avenue. Do. It's a comment again about how neighbors have information about yes. who's renting. And one point is that you know the realtors have big signs with phone numbers and all. <clears throat> if we don't want to do that for properties that are not being managed by realtors. I'm hoping there's a way that doesn't involve calling the police. And maybe maybe there could be something on the city website that that lists those permits. So that's not public. But if I need to go to it, I could find out who to call mm -hmm. without having to call the cops. There are times when I've needed to call, not for a complaint, but because I could see something going wrong and I needed to get in touch. Yeah. So maybe that's a thought, but I, I think there should be a way for us without involving like a little directory. We were like like I a mean, directory of the on the website. Yep. 
We'll figure that out, Jenny. Thank you, because I realized how important that was. You brought that up the very first time, and it will not go to the wayside. Thank you so much. I did not forget. Okay, guys, um, at this point, I'm, I'm, we're going to stop. We, we have, we're going to look over what we have, and then we're going to start reading some of these things. But I'll get in touch with all of you and let you know what our next steps are. You know what the next agenda is because it's been put out already. Thank you for your well, time. It, it hasn't been posted yet. No, it hasn't been posted, but we have it. Thank you. So, and so next time, downtown. No, okay. R4H. Four, four yes. Next so it's, it's, but what we need, well, what, what's the date? Town Center as well. Thanks, Jeffrey. I appreciate it. August 2nd. August 2nd. Okay.